What's going on to all my Atlanta fans out there, and welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again, breaking down the third episode of season three of Atlanta, which was titled The Old Man and the Tree, an episode in which we see our crew attend this really interesting party, and we got some moments to talk about with Paperboy, Earn making that money, Van living her best life and living in the moment, Darius said he just witnessed some racism, and oh yeah, we're going to talk about ghosts and the theme of ghosts so far in these first three episodes, all in this spoiler review. Before we break it all down, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts you're new to the channel and love early movie reviews tv breakdowns and live streams well come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell as you all can see on the screen now if you enjoyed this spoiler discussion well make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also share the review it would mean the world to me but speaking of meaning the world last week's engagement the comments the likes the shares it means the world to me but let's keep that same energy let's have a lot of discussions in the comments about this third episode pros cons your thoughts on the individual moments for our characters what do you hope to see from the characters as we move on what were some of the deeper meanings you took away from this episode and, and, and the big question is what's the theme what's the theme that you all have gotten for the first three episodes in this season so far let's talk about everything in the comments below but Let's just break it down. First and foremost, I really enjoyed this episode. I love when we see our crew together. I love that Van is now in the mix a little bit more, even though she kind of separated herself at the end of the episode, which we'll talk about. But I love the conversation that we're having with Paperboy so far, the other side of fame. Earn really learning from the first two seasons and really kind of playing the game. Whenever we get something with Darius, as I mentioned last week, that's my favorite character. We're going to talk about him in this breakdown. And of course, everything going on with Al and the themes that this show loves to tackle. I, I really enjoyed this episode. I love what we're getting so far. But again, that's just my first impressions. Let me know yours in the comments below. But let's get into the discussion tonight. So first and foremost, the whole idea of this episode is going to this party. Earn sets up this party with this investor billionaire by the name of Fernando. And again, Earn pay attention to him he's learning from those first two seasons he now knows to play the game he now knows to look into other investments other opportunities not just for a paper boy but for himself and his family so i love that connection that continuation of the character learning from his mistakes from the past two seasons which speaking of kind of learning we're going to talk about Al and him playing the other side of fame which again going into this party i mentioned it last week i'm really intrigued to see Paperboy Al looking at the other side of fame, right? And kind of playing into fame because we know in the first two seasons, Al wasn't about that life. I think of season two when he had that date with the girl, Sierra, I think her name was, and she was like, let's just pretend to be dating for the sake of dating, for the social media purpose, right? That can help both of our brands. And we know that's not Al, but so far in this third season, He's not 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 being true to himself. Obviously, he took Atlanta to Amsterdam with him, and it's going to be interesting to see him playing into that. But so far, he's like, you know what? Let's see what it looks like. Let's let's burn some money. Let's hang out with rich folks, right? So I'm really interested to see is Al going to continue that path and maybe lose himself on that path, or is he just going to be like, you know what? This ain't for me. I ain't about that life. So that's going to be really kind of interesting to see what we get from Al in this season. I'm really enjoying that narrative that we got from him in the first three episodes so far. But we intro into Atlanta as a white woman's calling, I assume, the police because you got these black folks in this neighborhood. And she's just, you know, that's the microaggression that we got so far. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But they make their way to the house. And I'm like, Earn, you did it again. Did you F up again, man? And as Van points out, this don't look like no house of a billionaire. This looks like a house straight out of Tales from the Hood. I'm like, yeah, Earn, it don't look good for you so far. But again, he's getting, he's setting up his connections. He got his little hookups there as they make their way into the house, which again, I'm like, this is just a trap house in Amsterdam. But as they walk up the stairs, trash all over the place. And Darius points it out very, you know, uh, you know, smartly. He's like, you know what? That was a decoy. This is all the front as we enter Tony Stark's penthouse. And yes, this is a nice house. This is how rich folks are living as we see a Nando's in the middle of his house, which I've never eaten at Nando's. I know I'm from Chicago. I know there's a Nando's out there, but I've never eaten them before. Quick little side note. Is Nando's any good? Is it good chicken? Let me know in the comments below because I've never eaten them before. But either way, we get into the episode as Earn runs into the guy he wants to meet there. Obviously, besides Fernando, is the guy by the name of Will, which we're going to talk about who his fiance is by the end of this review. But he's talking to Will, and as Earn is talking to him, he's like, what are you, what, Van, we see Van in the background, oh, this looks nice, let me just put it in my pocket, which makes me think to myself, what is Van doing, you know, what she did last week, going to that funeral, seeing Tupac die, and now she's just going to rich people's house, and you know what, I like it, I want it, which, hey, we talked about it in last week's live stream, and let's have a discussion in this video, I like it, I want it, living in the moment, 
Did she sleep with Darius last week when it was 4 a.m. with those ice cubes? I know we talked about it on a live stream. I personally think no, because I don't think that Darius would do that to his friend. But then, you know, I, we were talking about it more. It's like, well, they are on vacation. This is not Atlanta. They're in Amsterdam. They're in Europe. You know, and people, you can, you can sleep with you. Just sleep whoever you want to. She ain't in a relationship with Earn, even though she says she has a boyfriend. But, hey, Earn. Is uh, your boy Darius smashing a van or the other way around? I don't know. Let's talk about that in the comments below. But again, let me know what what is Van doing? And we're going to talk about her a little bit later. But in comes Fernando. He gets introduced to uh, Al. And he seems to be a big fan of his, or at least we think he is, as he wants to invite him to this tree. He takes him outside to the tree and, and Paperboy thinking, you know, tree. I'm about to go ahead and, and smoke one with a billionaire. But no, it's, it's literally a tree, which... My thinking is, and correct me if I'm wrong, or if you were thinking the same thing, or if you have another thought, the significance of that tree. I think there's a deeper meaning to that tree in regards to Fernando building his house around this tree and it having some type of meaning to him. And we'll talk about that picture a little bit later with the first check and the black, bo black guy being in the background. Do you think that tree has a deeper meaning in regards to black folks being hung from that tree and him taking that tree and, and having it as a trophy. And obviously there's some themes of ghosts and haunting of ghosts and particularly black people that were done wrong, doing, getting their revenge. I don't know if that's a significant tree. Let me know. Money grows on trees. It could be a deeper meaning there, but let me know if I'm, if you're on the same wavelength with me in regards to him having that tree and having some deeper you know, rooted, like terrible things done with that tree in regards to slaves and hanging of black people. Uh, let's talk about that in the comments. Again, I could be way off in my, uh, you know, kind of, you know, uh, thesis in that, but hey, Let's talk about it in the comments below. As Darius, we're going to talk about him. He's finding a bathroom that no one knows about, but he finds something else a little bit interesting. But going back to Al, as he's having this conversation with Fernando, he takes him up to the to the poker situation, to his poker room, and, you know, 20000 to, to, to play. And, you know, Payboy's like, oh, 20000 that ain't nothing to me. Again, playing into the thing. I'm going to burn through this money as he dumps all his money on the table. They get into this kind of like money ain't nothing to him right now, which, again, he can't take it to the grave with you, so he's just, you know, he's spinning it. You know, he's he's flaunting that money. Again, I think this is a much different Al than season one and season two of Al. This is a much different version of that character. But we hear this story that Fernando brings up, and this goes back to my tree theory. He talks about one night, a black man who was wet and ashy at the same time. I've never heard of that before. That's like an oxymoron, but he's wet and ashy. He invites him in. They have a connection, and Al makes his connections of what that connection might have looked like, but he says that he chose him and that he cleansed him and, and all that stuff. And the question gets brought up in regards to, was it a ghost? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in devil? Do you believe in the balancing of everything, the devil having more influential uh, uh, influence on people uh, than, than God himself? Which, again, brings me to the conversation in regards to Nino or, or, or Fernando and his situation, his wealth, him selling himself to the, his, to the devil, him selling his soul to get his wealth. And, again, he cut his great, 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 great grandfather cut that first check. Check, but what did he have to do to cut that first check? And what does he continue to have to do to maintain this money and this facade and all this stuff that he's obtained to be this billionaire? He talks about that ghost. And as that ghost coming back, well, something comes back on him a little bit later in this episode, which Paperboy gets his revenge on that tree. But again, let me know if, again, are we puzzling, putting the pieces to the puzzle with this Fernando character and the theme, again, of taking back what's yours? Let's talk about that in the comment section. But getting back into the actual moment here, Paperboy wins, but we got a sore loser. Everyone clears out the room, and Paperboy's like, bro, you, you going to get my money? Well, we'll get into that here. He gets a little bit something a little bit later, but we're going to check back in to Paperboy, but let's check in with Earn and Van who meet this young up-and-coming entrepreneur by the name of TJ who's an artist. He's a, you know, he paints his own pieces and he shows them a very sad piece is what I think he called it. And Earn uh, and, and Van look at it. It's a, it's a white man with no pants, what his, uh, his, his private parts are, wearing a, a Supreme outfit. Yeah, this kid has no taste. This kid has no no good taste in art, but uh, who am I to say? But either way, we see that this uh, Will individual has invested over 500000 on TJ in this whole idea of bringing in artists, using the rooms, using the influential uh, figure of Fernando and his million-dollar, billion-dollar house. But we see that all of it kind of boils down to subscriptions of TJ's terrible art. And Van, I was to say, Ernst looking at himself like, 
uh, this don't seem like that much of an, a good investment, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to you because I think Doja Cat, she might be invested in this, and I don't want to you know, crisscross those paths. So I'll, I'll get back to you, Will, which we're going to get back into the conversation that Earn kind of works his way into the situation. But let's go back into Al and Earn, who Al's pissed at this point. He's like, man, this dude, Fernando, owes me 40000 This is rich dude. They just take money from each other. He's pissed at this point. He's going to get his revenge a little bit. But the conversation I really enjoyed that they had between Earn and Al is the scheming. And he's like, man, I think this black kid is taking advantage of this white dude. And, and Al's like, yeah, so what? White people take advantage of black people all the time. And particularly, and we can all uh, have a conversation about this, the conversation that's been had in the last few years, and, and not even the last few years, but I'm just talking about in the regards of this conversation with TikTok, white content creators always stealing new dances, styles, uh, you know, you name it, and putting it on their platform as is they invented it, right? And I mean, we date this back to white folks taking music, taking art, taking whatever, right? So that conversation within itself goes into that plants to see for Earn being like, you know what? Goddamn, I need to maybe go ahead and get involved in this scheme. And again, Will it bite him in the ass late in the season? Will it be just like, I'm just giving what I'm old or be giving what I've been taking? I guess we'll find out later in the season. But again, I love that, that conversation because, again, it's always taken. Taken, taken, taken. No credit whatsoever. No, you know, getting what we deserve. So I love that that theme kind of tackles into this whole theme of getting back and ghosts haunting what was taken from them, right? So I, I, I love what we're getting so far in this episode and particularly in the first three episodes. But we get into the conversation where Al finds out that Fernando, oh, he's upstairs. He ain't coming back. So we're going to get into that conversation in a second. But we'll talk about Al when we wrap everything up. But let's go back and talk about Van. Now, in this moment, we see her pushing in random people in the pool again, living in the moment, just relaxing as she's having a conversation with Earn, who's concerned about her. He's talked to them. her mom. is like, Lottie's good, but your mom is concerned with you, Van. Is, is, are you good? Are you okay? And she assures him everything's fine. I can't have a break. I just, I'm just being myself. I'm living in the moment, which makes me go back to that whole Darius thing. She don't care if she slept with him. She's just living in the moment. They're not in a relationship anymore. So again, but that might not be the case. But again, I do like this side of, of Van because we've only really seen her interacting with Lottie and and, uh, and then occasionally Darius and occasionally Van and obviously with Earn. But it's nice to kind of see, okay, this perspective. And I like that other perspective that Van asks of this show. And I'm really excited to see what they continue to do with her. But right now, and I love that I, that that you know uh, mindset of like living in the moment. That's something I want to do, continue to try to do in my life is live in the moment, not stress about past things, future things. Embrace the moment as she, again, pushes someone else in the pool and that person couldn't swim. So, again, she's just like living her best life at this moment. But, again, does that cause any concern for you all with Van or does it make you excited to kind of learn more about her and what she's going to be offering in this season? Let me know your thoughts on Van so far. But going in with my favorite character and one of my most interesting uh, topics I want to bring up in this episode, Darius. He makes his way through the party. Oh, it's about disgusting ass food. Hey, uh, do you mind? And he walk, he runs into this Asian girl, and she's like, "Oh no, I'm no, I'm good. You know, I'm already, I'm engaged. I have a fiance." He's like, "Oh, I, I just wanted you to pass me that, you know, that drink over there." So, oh, I'm sorry. I thought that you were hitting on me. Black guys tend to hit on me, and <laughs> Darius always putting a, a, a positive spin on things. Oh well, it makes sense that black people in the Asian community go, you know, hand in hand, you know, we both love hip hop, we both love anime, and she's like, oh, that's funny, that is a good similarity, and it's just like, there he is, hilarious, I love that character so much, but in comes this random dude by the name of Sox, who overhears this conversation, and he thinks upon himself, man, I'm sorry for that racism that you just experienced, which we'll get into a little bit later here, and just white uh, guilt and what they consider to be racism, but it's in this moment, just going to the funny moment, and Darius just always giving me the best laughs in the show. My man Sox takes off his head, and Darius is like, ooh, that's a very extreme hairline. <laughs> very few white people can pull it off, as he mentions different actors like Jason Statham. I think he mentions uh, Bruce Willis, and he's not white, but, you know, The Rock. The Rock has a hairline that's pretty, and speaking of hairlines, you know, and no disrespect to the, to the king, but LeBron... He's seen some better days. I'll just say that. But again, I just love when Darius just interacts with people and has his discussions and how he perceives certain interactions. He didn't see that at all as being racist or a microaggression, which brings me to the question. When that girl said that to him, like, oh, I'm good. And like black, black people, black men always tend to hit on me. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm engaged. 
Did you take, would you, I'm just saying personally, would you have taken that as a racist comment, as a microaggression comment? Me personally, no. And in the way she like continued to have a conversation and had to laugh and she saw Darius early, like, hey, I didn't take it that way. But it don't matter how I took it. It's how Socks and how he told the story and how other people, how that story became something more than what it was. But again, I'm just kind of curious, how did you all take that interaction between Darius and the random woman who ended up getting, uh, who was engaged by the beginning of this party, who's no longer engaged by the end of the episode? Curious on your thoughts on that. But we see Socks takes Darius aside. He's like, man, I'm really sorry about that incident, that 12 years a slave moment, as we see more and more people of the party have heard about this moment, and it has now turned into this whole different thing. We see it all the time. Oh, a white person sees a black person having dis- being discriminated on or a racist comment, and they take it upon themselves to step in and integrate their feelings and how they perceived racism, and they feel bad. And white guilt, as we talk about here, Darius is just like, I didn't, she didn't, no, I mean, and we see the girl wave at Darius, and he's just like, no, 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 stop, stop, and then, unfortunately, hey, Darius, I want to introduce you to my fiance, who we'll find out to be Will a little bit later, but they go ahead and, and attack her, uh, you know, again, white guilt, and I love the conversation with Darius and the kid and the random guy talking about, again, white guilt and, you know, the difference between racism and classism. It don't matter if you're in America, if you're in Europe, anywhere in the world it exists. And they talk about Coca-Cola and, again, classism and in regards to, uh, or not classism, but uh, capitalism and, and a little bit of classism, too, because Darius mentions it there. And they talk about Taco Bell. That, again, Darius and his con- his conversations with anyone, he is just such a fascinating character to me, and I just love when we have those moments with my best favorite character of the show. But let's check back in with Earn, who sees a picture of our investor billionaire Fernando. You see the check, and right in the back of him is a black man in the shadows. Is that the same black man that maybe came to the door of Fernando, who was wet and ashy at the same time? Is that that ghost wanting his revenge, wanting his, you know, vengeance of maybe being killed, maybe being taken advantage of, maybe being hung on that tree. Again, might be a wild, wild theory that I have, but let me know your thoughts on all that. But going back into getting what you deserve, taking back, playing into the scheme, taking advantage of the white man, because, hey, white people do it all the time. We see Earn, sees TJ, sees Will, and like, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and invest in this idea. But before we do that, I think TJ's a a young, up-and-coming genius. Let me go ahead and be his manager. That would be a good idea. And, you know, you're a friend. Normally, people charge 30% commission, which we know I'm not a a manager in the the industry. But I remember in season one uh, or season two, they said that he gets like five, four, five percent of his cut. Well, that's uh, triple, right? Because we see Ern say, I'll cut you a deal. I'll give you 25%. And we see TJ say, yeah, let's ask for a little bit of money. And we'll go ahead and make that happen. But unfortunately, and again, this is Ern making this living. I think he's going to still work with TJ. I think we're going to get more of TJ in this season. But he's making money money moves. But unfortunately, that is interrupted because our boy Paperboy is getting his payback on Fernando, who didn't pay him and pretended to sleep when he was calling him. Like, oh, yeah, I got an alibi for your ass. That tree that I think might have some sinister, you know, rootings of of racism and terrible discrimination and hanging of people, he's cutting down that tree. That means everything to Fernando. It might be the source of, again, money grows on trees. That might tear down his his whole thing that he has set up as he's literally chainsawing it, which (laughs) him doing that, running back in the house, taking all everyone's chicken, taking some souvenirs with him. That moment, that moment right there was hilarious. But I'm like, hold on, y'all running out of his house. And then we see Socks is in the car, give his uh, paper boy's hat back. But I'm like, where the hell is Van? Which leads us to the last scene of this episode. Van's out here again, living her best life, minding her business. Ern's calling her to check on her. She's like, you know what? I'm good. Let me go ahead and enjoy my food, enjoy my time in Amsterdam. So she's living her best life, which again, I don't know if that meant sleeping with Darius for one night or maybe many nights to come. Or she's just, again, Figuring out who she is, she said that she's having a little bit of a you know a panic situation in episode two, so she's just living life as she should be without any judgment. But again, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Let me know what you all hope to see in Van. Do we see Earn continue to make these little side hustles and continue to work the system and scheming and you know doing his thing? Paperboy, will he continue to lean more into fame, into fa- fandom, and kind of living that other side of him, bumping elbows with the rich folks and losing himself in that same time? Or will he come back to who Paperboy really is? And what will Darius find himself into now? What are the other conversations that he finds into? It will be other traditions that we see in Amsterdam. 
I can't wait to find out. But I love this episode from top to bottom. Again, let me know your favorite moment, moments that you found that have a little bit of a deeper meaning. What do you all think about the theme of ghosts in this season and people and the black people who was tortured, who were taken advantage of, coming back and getting what they wanted in the form of haunting these terrible white people that have done terrible things to them. Let's talk about it all in the comments. Again, if you stuck around to this point in review, I appreciate you. Before you leave, make sure if you haven't already to like this video, share this video. Like I said, comment your thoughts in the comments. And of course, come on, come and join this family filled with early movie reviews, TV breakdowns like so. And of course, we have a lot of live streams. I love growing this community and interacting with you all so come and join the community hope you all enjoyed this breakdown we'll be back for next week i might do a live stream i really had a fun time with you all so we might be live maybe right now we'll see uh but neither way keep an eye out for more content again i appreciate you hope you're staying safe as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel if we're going live it's going to be right here check out my other content we'll catch you on the next video